Today, we're going to create a responsive and animated navigation menu using Framer Motion. You can grab the starter code in the description to follow along. To start, I have this basic Next.js page with a navbar at the top. And if we just take a look at the code, there's a component here for the navbar in the root layout. And you can see in this navbar, there's just a simple logo and there's an unordered list of nav items. And if we just click into this, it's a simple array of labels. So this is how it looks like on the desktop. And if we try to make this responsive, you can see this nav bar still is there. So let's start by making this nav bar disappear when we're on a smaller screen. So I'm going to go into this UL and instead of just having it flex all the time, by default, it will be hidden. And then on small or larger screens, as defined by this tailwind definition of 640 pixels for the width, it should go back to flex. So if I hit save, you can see this list of nav items has disappeared. But if we were to expand it back out, it will come back. Now let's create the navigation menu that we do want to show on these smaller screens. So I'm going to create a new component here and I'll call it nav menu. Create a new functional component. And just so we can see this, I'm going to go into the nav bar and below this UL, I'm just going to add nav menu. So now when I hit save, we can see this placeholder component come through. So now switching to the nav menu component, I'm quickly going to add on this div a position relative. By default, it will be display block. But then on the larger screens, we should hide this. So it'll still remain here on the smaller screen. Now let's build out this nav menu. There's going to be two parts to this component. One will be a button that we can toggle to open and close it. And the second will be the actual menu itself. So I'm going to replace this nav menu text. And for now, I'm just going to put a placeholder button. And maybe for now, I'll just put menu in here. Now, this button is going to toggle whether the menu will be open or not. So let's store that state in a state variable. So I'll just call it menu open, set menu open, use state, and originally it will be false. And let's import use state. And let's also make this a client component while we're at it. Then on this button, I'm going to just add a on click. And it'll simply be set menu open to whatever the opposite of the current value. So currently this won't do anything. But now under this button, let's just add a div for the actual menu content itself. So let's conditionally render this div. So I'll say if menu open is true, then let's return a div. And for now, I'll just put content so we can see this. So now if we try doing this, if I click menu, we can see this content shows up. If I click it again, it disappears. Now let's make this look a little bit better. So on this div, I'm going to apply some styles. I'm going to give it position absolute. And remember, this is relative to this entire nav menu component now because we set relative on the parent div. We we'll give a top of negative two and a right of negative two. So slightly above and to the right of the bounds of this div. Width 64, min height of 64. Now give it rounded corners of medium, BG neutral 50, padding of eight, Z of 10. So this sits on top and finally flex and flex call. So now let's actually try this again. So if I hit the menu, we have this nice box that shows up. But now I can't see the button. We need to fix that. But for now, we can just leave this open. Now let's add the content actually in this menu. So let's add a unordered list. Give it styling of flex, flex call, gap two, and flex of one to stretch. And I'm going to just map over the same nav items that we had on the desktop version. So nav items.map. I'm going to extract the label value from each of these. Now I'll just simply return a next link href will be for now there's no other pages here so we'll just have it be the current page the key will be the value of label and then in here we'll do the list item class names of text to excel font medium so it stands out a bit and we'll just pass the value of label and we need an extra parentheses up here an extra one down here now if i hit save if i open the menu again OK, there are the links that come through. And just as a little bit of a nice touch, let's just add a row of social icons here as well that you might want to add. So at the top, I'm actually just going to copy in an import statement for a few SVGs that are already in the project for GitHub, Dribbble, and Twitter. And I can import them because I have a Webpack config set up to allow me to just import SVGs like this and make it much easier. 
Then below this UL, I'm just gonna make this list of social icons. So I do a div, styling of flex, gap four, and a margin top of eight. And then I'll just pass in, I'll do one of these, I'll do a link, which won't go anywhere for now. And I'll just, let's say, start with the GitHub logo, give it class names of height five, width five, and I'll give a fill of this GitHub, which I configured in Tailwind config already. So now if I just hit save, open this again, you can see the GitHub logo. I'm just gonna quickly do this for the other two icons. So also add in the dribble icon with the dribble color and the Twitter icon with the Twitter color. And I can see all three of them are showing up here on the right. Okay, this menu is looking pretty good. Now let's get back to this button and let's actually make it look a little bit better. So I'm gonna make this button its own component because we're gonna add a bunch of stuff to it. So make a new file, call it nav button, make a placeholder component. And let me just quickly set up important props on this button. So primarily we need a way to connect to this menu open state. So on the button, I'm gonna define some props. So I'll define that in an interface, nav menu toggle props. And there'll be two properties here, a menu open, which will be a Boolean, and a set menu open, which is a function that takes a Boolean and doesn't return anything. And this nav button will conform to this prop definition. So react.functional component, which will take the props. Then I can go and destructure these props in the constructor. So menu open, set menu open. And on this div, I'm just going to do the simple toggle on click. So on click, we can simply call set menu open to whatever the opposite of menu open is currently. And now let's place this button in here. So instead of this button, I'm going to swap this for a nav button. So I've closed this and let's replace props. So menu open will be menu open, set menu open will be set menu open. Now I want to hit save. So now it's the nav button component instead, but if I click on it, this toggling still works. Okay, now let's actually change how this nav button looks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a hamburger icon that animates to be an X when the menu is open so that you click it and it will close it. We're gonna have a hamburger menu icon that has two lines and the X will have two lines. So we're gonna animate the lines to those different states. So specifically in this nav button component, I'm just gonna paste in these two, I'm gonna call them variants because we're gonna use frame motion in a little bit. These correspond to the two lines. So line one, then open state. So when the menu is actually open, then this first line will have this configuration, which will be part of the X. And the second line will have this configuration. And when it's closed, it'll have essentially a straight line for each of these. I know this seems a little bit complicated, but we'll see this shortly how this comes to life. So in this div, what I'm gonna do is replace this nav button. And we're just gonna create an SVG with these paths. So here I'll create an SVG. I'll just give it a width of 24 and a height of 24 and a view box of 0, 0, 24, 24. And inside the, the SVG, I'm gonna create two paths for each of the two lines. So path and this path, I'm just gonna pass in the path one variance dot closed. And I'm going to do a dot, 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 pass that through. And I'm just gonna do the same thing below, but just change this to paths two variance. So now when I hit save, you won't see anything. And that's because we need to apply some styling on the path. But I'm actually going to apply on the div so it applies everywhere. So I'm gonna give class names of position relative. We give a justify self center flex, flex call, gap of two, cursor pointer, stroke of black, which will give the color of the lines. I'll give a width of stroke two. And I'm actually going to apply a Z of 50 here so that we can see the button even when the menu is open. So now if I hit save, now we can see these lines show up. And actually now if I click this, you can see we can still see the button. It doesn't change state, we'll get to that in a second, but you can still see it. And so I can click it again and it closes the menu. Okay, now let's animate this button to become an X when the menu is open. So we're gonna use frame of motion to drive this animation. So the first thing I need to do is create what are called control objects for each of these hats that control the state that they're in and therefore drive the animation. So just here at the top, I'll create two control objects, one for each path. So make a path one controls. And I'll just call use animation from frame of motion. I'll just copy this and just call the second one path two controls. 
And we're gonna to need to make this a client component as well because we're using framework motion. And then I'm going to set a use effect that will toggle the animation when the value of menu open changes. So I'll say use effect. If menu open is true, then I'll say path one controls dot start an animation to path one variants dot open. And I'll similarly call path two controls dot start on path two variants dot open. Else, I'm going to start an animation to the closed state. So let me just copy this. And so dot open, we'll make it dot closed and dot closed. And we want this use effect to run whenever menu open changes. Let me import use effect. And so now we need to actually attach these controls to the paths. So I'm going to make these paths motion components, import motion, make this second path as well motion component. And then I'm just going to attach the animate property and attach the path one controls. And on this other one, path two controls. So now let's try it. I'm going to click the button. It now animates to this X state. If I click it again, it animates back to the hamburger state. I'm just gonna tweak this a little bit and set the transition duration to be 0.2, make it a little bit quicker. And I'll apply that to both of these. So now if we try it again, it's a little bit quicker and a little bit more snappy. Now, finally, let's just add a little nice animation to the menu itself as it pops in and pops out. So back in the nav menu component, I'm just gonna take this whole surrounding div of the menu and make it a motion div and import motion in this file and make sure we change the closing tag as well. Then on this div, I'm gonna attach the key properties we need. So I'm just gonna have it fade and scale in. So I'm gonna set initial. So pre-animation scale should be zero and opacity should be zero. We want to animate to scale of one, opacity of one. And when he leaves, we should go back to scale of zero, opacity of zero. And I'm just gonna add preemptively a transition configuration object, and I'll set the duration to be 0.5 and type to be a spring animation. So let's try this. So when I click the button, it animates in. When I close it, there's no animation. So there's two issues. The first thing is the exit animation doesn't work. And the second is the scale is coming from the middle of this div, which doesn't seem very natural. We'd want it to scale from this button itself. So let's first turn on the exit animations. That's pretty simple. We just need to surround all of this and then animate presence. Go down here and add the closing tag. So now if we try again, we get the closing animation as well. And now to fix the scaling, all I'm gonna do is on this div, I'm going to add that the origin for all transform should be come from the top right instead of the center by default. So now if I try again, open it, it nicely scales from the top right, close it, scales back down. That's it for this video. Drop any questions you have in the comments. If you found this video helpful, you should also check out this one on screen and I'll see you in the next one.